Welcome to Specific Love. Today I'm going to show you I made this heavy duty mobile miter station that not only has a bunch of storage underneath, it has fold down arms so this can fit in a nice compact area, especially if you have a small shop like mine. Now for those of you who have been watching some of our previous videos, you've probably seen this old miter saw. It's basic, it does the job, and I've had it for a while and I just figured it is time to upgrade. So now I have this awesome sliding miter saw. But instead of using this table, which I've been using since we moved in, I'm going to be upgrading to an awesome mobile miter saw station. Let's begin. I first started by cutting down the wood needed for the frame. I chose to use 2x4s for the setup to keep the process simple and I already had them in stock. The four main supports are 36 inches long to help position the saw a little higher than the previous table, which would keep me from leaning over as much to cut future pieces. I also needed six boards at 18 inches long and six more at 13 inches long. These will combine to be the top frame, a middle shelf, and a bottom frame. I then lightly sanded all the boards to remove splinters using a downdraft table to help reduce airborne dust. Once these were cut, I decided to go with pocket screws on the 13 inch and 18 inch versions for a little added strength and to help keep them hidden. But to make this simpler, you could just screw straight through the wood if you so choose. I then used a carpenter square to line up the frame before screwing it together. I realized after the build that using some clamps to hold down the wood at this point could have helped. For the top of the frame, I connected the wood with the long side on a vertical fashion to add more strength to this section. But for the lower two shelves, I turned the wood horizontal to allow for more room. I also found the center boards to be a little tight for using a drill, so I grabbed the ratchet to finish tightening the screws in place. And you might have noticed that I didn't use glue for this setup, which was decided upon just in case I wanted to upgrade something in the future. I then made a duplicate for the opposite side. To complete the center frame, I flipped the first two sections on their side and used a large clamp to hold the 18 inch boards together before adding screws. The clamps definitely helped with this process. I then cut down another 2x4 into four 20 inch sections and four 21 inch sections. These will create the wings on each side of the saw. And after a quick sanding, I again used pocket screws to hold them together. And now that the frame was complete, it was time to cut down some plywood for the top. Fortunately, I had some leftover from another project or I would have needed to purchase a full sheet. So I measured the sizes of the shelves and tops and strategically aligned the cuts on the plywood to make them all fit. And using an old straight level, I cut the shelves and sides first, which left just enough room for the custom top section. The top section was designed to have an angle edge that sticks out in the front to minimize the risk of running into the long front frame of the saw. This section will also act as handles when a station needs to be moved around. I also think it just looks cool. I then gave the top and shelves a test fit and they look great. This was also the best time to test fit the saw. I then added the top to the wings, but this time I did add some glue for strength. Since these will be held by hinges and will be hanging most of the time, it is a wise plan to give them some additional support. I also added some brad nails through each top to hold them secure until the glue had time to dry. Moving back to the center section, I wanted to add a small dust deflector to the back to reduce some of the debris thrown from the saw. Miter saws are known to be nearly impossible to collect all the dust, but I still wanted to try to catch some. So I cut down some of the remaining plywood to stretch across the back and to angle a few inches forward. I again used pocket screws to hold these in place. It was not easy to hide the screw locations, so I just put them on the inside which will be mainly hidden by the saw. Now when it comes to a miter saw, I know that dust collection, well, it's extremely hard to do, especially on a sliding miter saw because you have just so many more directions you have to worry about. Now I built this wall here to deflect some of the sawdust, at least hopes to, and I've noticed that on my sliding one that it has a tendency to collect either on the saw or towards the back of it primarily. Uh, so I'm going to attach this rectangular dust cone onto the bottom, right about in there, and that way with the hopes as is being used that there is a funnel of air being sucked towards the back with hopes that it'll at least pull some more of that dust in that direction. So I measured out the center location, traced the inside of the port onto the wood, and used a jigsaw to cut out the section. I then secured it with some basic screws and used a grinding wheel to cut off the protruding pieces on the top. At this point, I wanted to stain the top and shelves of the station to give it more noticeable appearance, so I chose traditional cherry. When staining wood, 
I like to use a two-step method where I apply a decent amount of stain and then wipe off any excess. This usually leaves a very distinctive grain pattern because only some of the wood has enough time to absorb the color. And this plywood coloring turned out great. After giving the stain time to dry, I positioned the shelves in place, drilled and countersank four holes, and added screws. I also decided not to attach the top board in place at this point because I still needed to make some more adjustments and the dust deflector could be in the way. Now to attach the side wings, I had to find a couple straight 2x4s that would stretch the full width of the station. I then positioned these boards at the same height as the miter saw and carefully clamped each side into place. The sides had to be even front to back and flush with the center plywood and frame. So after several measurements, I used some hinges on the bottom to hold the sides to the frame. Now when I was removing the clamps, I must have forgot how gravity works because I made a little boo-boo. Fortunately, I did not break anything or get hurt. Now before I secure this top piece fully in place, I'm gonna take it off so I can have a flat surface and not have to deal with the uh, dust deflectors I have built in the back. That way I can flip this thing over and install the wheels on the bottom. It was now time to flip the station over and install the wheels. I should have done this before installing the wings, but it still worked out well. I then added heavy duty lockable casters on the bottom that I secured with two inch screws. These should be able to handle a lot of abuse and last a long time. I then flipped it upright and gave it a quick test spin. It was finally time to secure the top board, so I carefully centered it in place and clamped it down. I then added four screws to the top, making sure to countersink the holes so that the screws would sit flush. Now to hold the wings in position, I tossed around several ideas, but ultimately decided to keep them super simple. Now that I have everything constructed and put together, I need some brackets or something to hold these side arms or wings, whatever you want to call them, up whenever they're in use. Now, and for the most of the part, I'm not going to be using these most of the time when I'm using a miter saw. It's for smaller cuts and I won't necessarily need them. So I wanted to make this very simplistic and very easy. So I just took another 2x4 and just cut one end flat and one end with a little bit of a notch. Now the notch is going to go on the side over here where it hits the edge, the corner, the end, whatever you want to call it. And if you go from the bottom up here, it's not going to have enough room. But if you take it and you put it over here in the uh, against this top shelf, there's actually an insert here, I'll show you that in a second, it'll fit right there and give you that straight edge that you need. Now, as you see here, I'm actually going not where the 2x4 is here, but where actually the plywood is. And you can see there's a little step here, and that creates a great little base for this 2x4 to sit against. Now, as you can see here, it's sturdy. It's not going to come loose. It's relatively easy to put in place. And if I do need to store it, lower that down, and I can store it right here. Now, there's a good chance you might be thinking, well, that's sticking out. You're going to run into it. Well, if you look at this from the side, I have created a piece that sticks out here in the front so I don't run into the adjustment bar, which gives me clearance here. And if you look at the back back here, I have this that sticks out to kind of catch some of the dust and things like that, which gives clearance back here. So I can have this resting against the wall. It's not going to hit that bar. And if I'm walking in front of it here, the chances of me actually hitting this are probably pretty slim just because I'm going to want to avoid this saw. So overall, this may be a very simple and very easy and basic kind of way to hold your wings out there. I think I'm going to like it. We're going to go with it for now. I then grabbed the saw for a test and it fit great in its new home. Now, if you like this project, make sure you click the like button and tell me what you think about it in the comments. I really do read every single comment and I really like to know what you think. Because a lot of times you provide extra ideas that I never even thought of that can make this even better, especially for other viewers that might be watching or reading your comments. You can give them ideas. So make sure you list those below so they can help them. Now, I also have some other videos right over here that you might want to check out. So just take a gander at those and give them a moment of your time. Otherwise, have fun building.